Hello again and welcome back to SFF 180 Horror. On today's episode, following the tragic death of his wife, a bereaved man discovers there was a great deal about her life and who she was as a person that he never knew. In Come With Me, that's the book I'm reviewing. Hello everyone, Thomas here, your host as always. Thank you so much for joining me. I think a lot of us might agree that the duality of human nature is an extremely common storytelling trope, and not just in genre fiction, so why do writers keep coming back to it? I suppose that, you know, no matter how many times we tell ourselves we should have expected it, no matter how many ways we come up with to lie to ourselves that we aren't guilty of it too, it will always be shocking to us to discover that someone we thought we knew better than anybody in the world was someone we barely knew at all. That they had a secret self kept tucked away from the prying eyes and even more prying questions of friends and family. It can leave you feeling, if not betrayed, you know, completely unmoored, right? As if you can't know your own mind anymore. In the worst instances, you feel like your ability to trust has been shattered. This is what happens to Aaron Decker in Ronald Malfi's gripping new novel Come With Me, a supernaturally tinged story that probably veers closer to thriller than horror, but not enough to alienate horror purists. As the novel begins, Aaron is thrown into a distressingly real modern American horror when he learns from the news that his wife Allison has been killed in a mass shooting. The opening scenes are handled by Malfi with an absolutely flawless combination of tension and restraint. Aaron's frantic calls to Allison's phone that keep going to voicemail, his anxiety in the hours when he doesn't yet know her fate, the feelings of guilt and all of the what-ifs that race through his mind in the immediate aftermath. All of these moments are conveyed with both masterful suspense and a real sense from Malfi that he understands he's writing about moments of horror that too many people have actually experienced in this country over the years, and that he is handling the topic with compassion, not exploitation. The aftermath of sudden senseless loss is like being caught in a whirlpool that never quite sucks you under. But Aaron's attempts to cope aren't quite prepared for the discoveries he makes among Allison's possessions, like a receipt for a stay in a remote hotel paid for in cash, dozens of newspaper clippings about the murders of teenage girls going back 15 years or more, a gun in a hope chest on Allison's side of the closet, when Allison always despised guns and swore never to have one in the house. And Aaron is being guided towards these discoveries by strange phenomena in the house, such as a closet light that turns on and off by itself, or a key appearing where there hadn't been one before. Is Allison's ghost trying to contact Aaron? Or is Aaron simply cracking up? Or is something else going on entirely? At first, Aaron's suspicions go in obvious directions. Was Allison possibly having an affair? But once he goes through her papers in detail, he learns that she was pursuing an investigation in secret into the murders of a series of teenage girls, all of whom came from those tiny, depressed industrial towns where there's no apparent mobility of any kind, and the only social hub is the seedy local bar, where all the patrons are drinking off depression more than anything else. But why would Allison, a local reporter for a tiny regional newspaper, be pursuing this kind of investigation in the first place? And why wouldn't she just tell Aaron? As he says, if she was working on a book or something, he'd be completely supportive. Aaron finds himself picking up Allison's leads and pursuing the mystery himself. And then he discovers far more than he bargained for in the process. It seems like Malfi knows full well that there isn't much interesting about serial killer thrillers in and of themselves. <laughs> Sorry, but... Let's face it, the formula is pretty well played out by now. You have a determined investigator pursuing multiple clues, going down blind alleys, sorting out the red herrings from the valid leads, not always successfully, until the climactic moment when the killer is confronted and he delivers a deranged speech justifying his crimes in lurid and complex detail. Seen it once... You've seen it a thousand times. But the whole trope of serial killer as mad genius is nonsense. 
Netflix is full of cheesy documentaries purporting to explore the mind of the serial killer. But really, let's be honest, what is there to explore other than anger and misogyny? All those killers who managed to get away with murder after murder for years, like Ted Bundy or Jeffrey Dahmer or the Yorkshire Ripper, weren't successful because they were brilliant masterminds, but because the law enforcement agencies tasked with finding them were either incompetent or corrupt or were complicit in the cultural disregard of certain kinds of victims as insufficiently innocent to bother caring about. And to his credit, Malfi does address this in particular in the story. And even though he does follow serial killer formula pretty closely for much of the book, Malfi lets Come With Me rise above genre cliches by making it first and foremost a character piece. Robert Cargill has said that one easy way to distinguish a thriller from a horror story is that if it's told from the viewpoint of the investigator, it's a thriller, and if it's told from the viewpoint of the victim, it's horror. In Come With Me, we have investigator and victim in the same people, both Aaron, suffering an unimaginable loss and looking for closure and resolution, and Allison, whose childhood and eventual quest for justice, or revenge, has marked her in ways that she might have found hard to reconcile with herself, let alone Aaron. The story is never less than riveting, even when Aaron, not always unbelievably, behaves rashly on purpose in order to move events forward. Because we care about the guy. Malfi never quite says this outright, but it seemed clear to me that Aaron's real goal in pursuing Allison's investigations is a deep-seated need to achieve the justice against her own killer that was denied when the man took his own life after his rampage. If Allison really was on the trail of a serial killer picking off petite blonde teenagers, and Aaron can prove it, and run the man down, well, it won't exactly be like bringing Allison's killer to justice, but psychologically, it might be the next best thing, in addition to bringing closure to the victim's families. Also at the heart of the story are all of Aaron's discoveries about Allison's life he'd never known before, which in turn teach him more about his own capacity for acceptance and understanding. The book's title, Come With Me, is spoken by Allison at the beginning of the story, in the moments before she leaves on the trip into town, which will be her last, it's spoken in many different contexts by other characters throughout the book. Life itself is a series of journeys, and when you combine your life's journey with someone else's, you're going to end up in destinations you were never ready for. And the journeys we choose not to go on shape us just as much as the ones we do. And that's all I have time for on this episode of SFF 180. Remember, the most important thing, these are reviews. You will not always agree with me, but if you enjoyed watching, please hit that like button, share the video far and wide with all of your SFF reading friends. And above all, please subscribe if you have not done so. That is how the channel grows. You can also support the channel at my Tee Public store and at my Patreon where recruits into Wings Army get little perks, like getting to see some of my videos early access. I want to thank all of those wonderful people for their additional support. I use the Patreon money to pay Matt Olson, my wonderful gifted channel artist who does all of the amazing thumbnails for me and a bunch of his other work you're going to be seeing here very, very soon. So thank you once again for that added support. I want to thank all the rest of you for being the very best viewers in all of BookTube and... Until I see you next time, please stay safe and healthy, and happy reading. <laughs>